Hey everyone, Daniel here, and welcome to Chapter 11, The Seven Wonders of Integration. While The Seven Wonders is, first and foremost, a recovery program for people who identify as witches, healers, shaman, and spiritual advisors, I have to confess, I strategically planned the course to coincide with a series of major and rare astrological events and moon phases. In other words, this course actually doubles as spiritual preparation for the Age of Aquarius as well. With that in mind, I want to acknowledge that there is an underlying spell attached to each and every chapter of the Seven Wonders. Basically, each chapter was not only released on, but charged by the energy of each full moon, dark moon, new witch's moon, throughout the 12-week course of the Seven Wonders. I did this to ensure that the unique and powerful lunar energies will carry through the Seven Wonders when practiced into the future. I launched Chapter 1 on October 31st, 2020. Last Halloween was very special because it was also the night of a blue moon, an event that hasn't happened on Halloween since 1944. The following chapter, Chapter 2, is where I introduced the myth of Aquarius. We learned that Aquarius is the lead air sign, the bringer or bearer of the waters of enlightenment. Chapter 7 was a pivotal and very powerful chapter that was released on the winter solstice, which this year was accompanied by the Great Conjunction of 2020, marking the first day of the Age of Enlightenment, the Age of Aquarius. The inauguration of President Biden and Vice President Harris was the first signal that integration with the new energies of the Age of Aquarius are beginning to take hold, not just on a personal level, but on a global level. Personally, I created a Biden-Harris spell bottle, which I started on the night of the first debate, continued it on the night of the vice president debate, again on election night, and concluded it last Wednesday. I used the song Aquarius by the Fifth Dimension, the original version, uh, for for the ceremony, for each, each part of this as I went through it over the months. And it was so neat to uh, actually hear the the tail end of that song in a mashup they did on inauguration night on Wednesday. So, you know, to me, uh, is that a coincidence? You know, maybe. I simply acknowledge that my spell bottle was a small part in an overall shift, a shift from hatred into love, a shift delivering a message to everyone just in the nick of time. Let the sun shine in. Each of us will interpret uh, the events leading up to this moment in time in our own individual way. As the devastating impact of these truly historic times has touched all of us differently, how we choose to integrate with the impact of these changes will also be different for each of us. All right, let's get right to chapter 11's reading and lesson. Spiritual open-mindedness, which is wisdom. Being raised Catholic, and identifying as a witch may appear to be a form of dramatic, if not traumatic, rebellion. It is not. It is simply a spiritual practice that is more appropriate to my spiritual identity. Catholic Christianity does not integrate with or satisfy my fundamental spiritual needs. That being said, I earnestly acknowledge that Christianity does integrate with countless other people all over the world and it has done so for about 2,021 years. Where there are many different witchcraft traditions, countless definitions of the word witch, there are few universal qualities that are shared by all. In modern witchcraft, we generally agree that wisdom is a mark of a good witch. As such, having spiritual open-mindedness is the mark of a great witch. Same is true for spiritual advisors, tarot readers, shaman, psychics, and so on. Just as there are a plethora of theories, traditions, and schools of thought about witches and witchcraft, the same is true for every other religion or spiritual tradition on the planet. And yes, witches have been hunted and persecuted by nearly all of them. However, there is no denying that the followers of mainstream religions throughout time have come to us for spiritual guidance and help. When their own houses of worship seem to come up a little short, they show up at our houses for answers to spiritual questions and dilemmas. They need our help with exotic spiritual work. To connect with loved ones who have passed, they want terror readings. They want energy work. 
They want things their churches cannot or will not provide for them. For this reason alone, remaining open and understanding to all spiritual beliefs and traditions will serve to help us help them. Many of us probably have experienced a self-righteous Bible from Many of us have left mainstream religions because of hypocrisy. It can be particularly damaging if the source of our repulsion is a parent, family member, or mentor. These spiritual injuries cut deep and carry a particular harsh and bitter poison. Once the poison sets in, it can harden us against all religions and religious people, thereby blocking us from experiencing the best of both. A self-righteous Christian has all the charm of a shit sandwich for sure, and we're all aware they're out there, and we generally know what to expect when they cross our paths. However, what's harder for me to swallow is a self-righteous witch. I mean, I expect some level of righteousness and hypocrisy in mainstream religions, but when I can see it in the world of magic and witchcraft, suffice it to say, I can understand why some people who have legitimate interest in witchcraft with promising gifts of magic, may decide to walk away. That is not only unfair and damaging to the individual, but it is unfair and damaging to those of us who are honoring the legacy of witchcraft. To smugly claim exclusive, all-knowing supremacy over the correct definition and meaning of witchcraft is no better than a hypocritical, arrogant, self-righteous Baptist degrading a Presbyterian. In fact, I personally think it's worse because it goes against what I know to be the mark which spiritual open-mindedness, the acknowledgement that everyone is at a different place on their own spiritual path, is one of the best practices of a witch, healer, or spiritual advisor. The wisdom to recognize and respect all spiritual traditions, especially when working with those who have lost some, if not all, of their faith is a gift of an inspired and inspiring witch. All right, chapter 11, task, assignments, and spell work. Seven of Hearts. Over the past four years, we have been subjected to a steady daily flow of discouraging news and divisive hate. Even the more spiritually evolved, grounded, and centered among us have suffered from this disheartening period. Before we can begin the integration of our heart with the energies of enlightenment, we must first find the energies to enlighten a little encouragement in our heart. Grab a pen in your Shadow Pages journal, number one to seven. Next to each, Carefully consider and write out something that has encouraged you. This can be in the form of personal accomplishments, however big or small, encouragement from one of your intimates, or something that has happened in the world at large. A mix of all is great. Example, one, I'm finding ritual to be more rewarding lately. Two, I was able to leave home to get the car washed with less anxiety. Three, my boss was impressed with the way I handled an asshole who came into the store last week. Four, writing in my shadow pages journal has helped me be kinder to myself. Five, my anger is in a strong, near the surface, easily provoked, heated, turbulent, as it used to be. I finally started reading that book I've avoided for months. And seven, I no longer dread turning on the news. Having the heart to find encouragement will initiate your gentle integration back into the world. Seven acts of service. When self-encouragement seems impossible to summon, it's a sure indication that we're spending too much time in our heads. Newcomers to AA are cautioned. Your head is a dangerous playground. This is because alcoholics suffer with a mental imbalance, which triggers self-destructive thinking, ultimately leading to self-destructive drinking. The antidote, service work. Get out of your head and into helping others. Even get in and out of your head for 20 minutes in the interest of helping a friend yields an immediate rise in well-being. Once again, Make a list, number one through seven, in your Shadow Pages journal. List seven acts of service you can commit to in your everyday life. Example list. One, take my elderly neighbor's garbage out to the curb on trash day. Two, call my friend Jay, who is quarantining alone. Three, cook dinner for mom and drive it over to her. Four, plan a social distance get together with Megan. Five, call Kathy, it's been too long. Six, send Jill a card just because. Seven, volunteer for a community project. Pick at least one of those things and, and try it out. Next, seven steps and seven shoes. Integration into the new world with a new self-perspective is going to require basic respect. Knowing who we are, how we feel, and how we choose to react is powerful magic. But there are more steps to take in order to truly connect with the outside world. We've all heard the saying, walk a mile in someone else's shoes. 
And we all know what it means. But I wonder how many of us actually consider experiencing it. Within the first few months of my young sobriety, one of my mentors told me to go out to a different AA meeting. As a young, struggling songwriter in Austin, Texas, I found my home group at a funky little pink house in South Austin, where sober musicians and young gay men tended to gather. I was comfortable there, and the critical part of a successful rehabilitation is knowing that we are not alone. We hear our stories, our fears, our guilt and shame from another human being. That is true magic and the true miracle of recovery, maybe life itself. In my self-evaluation process, there was an abundance of me, me, and of course, poor, poor me. When newcomers arrive at this phase of sobriety, old timers usually step up with an embrace of reality, responding to a newcomer with poor me, poor me, pour me another drink. In other words, what's the point in abstaining from substance abuse if you still engage in abusive behavior patterns? This was probably one of the biggest lessons of my life, and I'll never forget it. My mentor told me to go to the most hardcore, rock bottom AA group in the sketchiest part of town. This is where street people go. This is where repeat offenders go. And this is where I went for a daily AA meeting one August day in 1997. In group session, everyone is invited to share personal stories of daily experience, strength, and hope. But all I did was listen in ways I had never listened before. And I heard the realities of human suffering beyond anything I had ever experienced. And yet, I also witnessed the hope, the serenity, and frankly, the towering wisdom that came from people who lived out of a grocery cart. Suffice it to say, I walked out of that meeting changed. This final task is probably the most significant of the complete summer wonders practice. This will transform you from being empathic to being an empath. It helps to remember that empathy is a, a, a form of human communication. Just as the capacity for language is built into all of us at birth, that does not mean we automatically know how to read and write. One more time, turn to your shadow pages journal. Make a list numbered one through seven. Next to each, you're going to write the name of someone you either don't know perhaps another person you strongly resent, maybe someone you are concerned about, or folks you just plain don't get. Example, number one, the street person at the corner. Number two, the gas station attendant. Three, the guy who cuts my hair. Four, that crazy woman who raged in the middle of Whole Foods. Five, the UPS guy. Six, my bitchy friend Kimberly. Seven, my 70 plus year old friend Tim, living with HIV. Look at your list and carefully consider each. Try to identify the person you feel the most resistant to. Do your best not to judge yourself here. When you've made your choice, take yourself out on an hour's walk. This is a modern mini vision quest. So you wanna be alone while you're out walking. No friends, no spouses, no kids, no pets, no ghosts, and so on. As you walk, imagine that you are the person from your list. How did this person start the day? What does this person do all day? Who does this person engage with on a daily basis? What makes this person happy? What makes this person sad? Start with these basic questions and let yourself walk deeply into this meditation. When you're done, reflect on your experience in your Shadow Pages journal. All right, that wraps chapter 11, the seven wonders of integration. In addition to the task and assignments this week, continue with your basic tools, your shadow practice. Write your shadow pages, three pages a day, every day. Give yourself a shadow dance for 20 minutes, one night a week this week. Take yourself out on a vision quest. Again, all these tasks and assignments are um, verbatim, right in the blog associated with chapter 11, the seven wonders of integration at daniellink.com. There's really cool bonus material this week in the digital witch box section on the blog. So be sure to scroll to all the way down and check that out. Um, and I actually, I want to take a moment to thank you uh, for watching. Uh, those of you who've been kind of sticking around and hanging out with me through this and kind of talking to me uh, on direct message on Instagram and all that, I really do appreciate it. So join me next for the very last edition of the Seven Wonders uh, chapter 12, The Seven Wonders of Dignity, next Wednesday, January 28th, for the first full moon of 2021. Thanks a lot for trusting me and hanging out through this. Be kind to yourself, and I'll see you at the Rainbow's Edge.